All right, so let's delete a movie now. So let's go John start. And I already have the function here, so don't you worry about it. Let's import it. Delete movie. Delete movie. Don't the parent whatever name. I don't know the movie will be. I will have an ID. That's it. And I'm going to return delete movie. And I this needs to have an ID. That's it. Now in this case, for example, I am a uh, oh, problem. What does it say? Unexpected token. Where? Coma. Done. All right. Now here schema. As you can see, it says delete movie is in resolvers, but it's not on the schema. So let's go here. Delete movie. And all we need is an ID. And this is an int. All right. And this, let's look at my database. And as you can see here, it says delete movie, but we only return true or false. This means we want to check if it was deleted or not. So we're going to say Boolean. That's it. True or false. Very simple. Jump start. As you can see, the, the when you return something, it's super awesome. Because, for example, if you're returning, I don't know, this one. For, oh, shit. For example, this, when you create a movie, right? You want to get the movie that was created and you want to know if it was created so you can update your state, maybe. So it's very nice that you can shape also the response of your mutations. So, for example, if you have a list and I create something, I can just mutate it automatically, right? That would be awesome. Um, and I can get the response with the request and it's good. I just, it's just good. I hope you can see the benefits now. Uh, all right, so now the lead movie is going to be Boolean. Let's go to database, the lead movie, the same thing. Resolvers, the lead movie by ID. Let's go. What the fuck? Again? This, this has to do something with, um, with um, no demon. All right, so don't worry about it. Let's do mutation. In this case, the lead movie. Let me refresh. The lead movie. And I want to delete the movie. Let's look at all the movies that we have. Oh, there's no movie. Movies. I want the IDs and I want the names. All right, let's delete Star Wars because it's shit. ID, zero. And as you can see, this is not asking me for anything. All right? When I do add movie, it's asking me for a subfield selection. For example, if I do here mutation, add movie. Score name. It's asking me that I need to select something. If you look at the schema, when you add a movie, you return a movie. So it's asking me to select this. But as you can see in the lead movie, it's not asking me to select anything because it knows that it only will uh, respond Boolean. So cool. Click and it wasn't deleted. Because? Why? Why wasn't it deleted? Let's go movies. Why not? ID, delete movie, ID zero. ID one. Oh my God, something with my database thing. Let's see. I just think I'm gonna drop this string bullshit because now all my IDs are uh, int. They're not strings anymore. So let's check. Delete this movie. Yay! Yeah. So now we deleted Avengers. Bye bye Avengers. And let's delete Star Wars. Oh no. We shouldn't we delete it. Oh, let's delete Logan. I didn't like it, huh? Let's go. Bye bye. Yes, it's there. And let's delete Star Wars as well. Ah, there you go. The only good one is the Godfather, which is awesome. All right. That will be it. So as you can see, we are doing queries when we get movies and we're doing mutations when we change the state of the database. Of course, if I kill my server and I start it again, movies is going to come back to the normal ways because this is on memory. But you could hook any, any, you could hook any backend to this GraphQL. And one of these backends that you can hook, it's another API, a REST API. So imagine this, your client talks to you in GraphQL language 
and then you take this GraphQL server and you talk to a, another API. So in this course, we are going to see that. We're going to try to talk to a HTTP, to a REST API via a GraphQL server, all right? And our user is gonna be interacting in the Playground console, which is awesome. On the Nuber clone that we have, when we clone Uber, I show you how to have a database backend with Node.js and TypeScript and Express and users and everything. Because like I tell you, this resolver is very simple, but what happens when you want to make uh, the user? And uh, how do you know which request is it? How do you know the token? Uh, all that stuff, we're gonna see it on the course, but in this course, we're gonna keep it simple. And that's, this will be it for GraphQL. I think that you understand it now. It's very, very simple. And with GraphQL yoga, even more. But yes, so on the next one, we're gonna finish by trying, I will show you the basics in how you can, with GraphQL, um, wrap a REST API. Because many people have this problem that they love GraphQL, but they have a REST API. So I'm gonna show you how to wrap it. All right, see you on the next one. Bye-bye.